Family members of Ijaz Chowdhury are calling for the officer who shot and killed him to be fired. The 62-year-old man is the third Canadian in the last month alone to be killed after police carried out what they called a wellness check. The family held another demonstration today and our Talia Ricci was there. Carol, the family says that they want accountability and that protests like the ones happening tonight in Mississauga will not stop until they feel there's been justice. Today, Peel Regional Police confirms that their mobile crisis rapid response team, which launched in January specifically to deal with mental health calls, was not present at the scene on Saturday. They say they were responding to other calls that evening. But Ijaz's death has the community and experts revisiting whether armed police officers should be the first to respond to mental health incidents, a warning that some of the video you're about to see is graphic. This needs immediate action now. Loved ones of Ijaz Ahmed Chowdhury haven't taken much time to mourn or sleep since Saturday. No, for two days now, they've been holding demonstrations, calling for answers after a call for help ended in Chowdhury's death. The family wants a public inquiry and for the officer who shot him to be fired. The 62-year-old was a father of four and had schizophrenia. My uncle was a harmless man. He had no power to hurt anyone. He could barely breathe at times. The family says they called a non-emergency helpline on Saturday and that it was paramedics who called police when they spotted a pocket knife. The SIU says when officers arrived, Chowdhury barricaded himself in the apartment and police entered when communication with him stopped. The statement says officers used a taser and plastic bullets before discharging a firearm multiple times. Video taken by a witness shows the moment police entered Chowdhury's residence where he was alone. Officers can be heard shouting at Chowdhury in English, a language his family says he didn't understand. Police say they believe Chowdhury had a weapon and was a danger to himself. My uncle had a pocket knife, which he kept in his pocket because he felt that the police was out to get him. Experts say there needs to be a total revamp of the system to deal with mental health calls differently. Our organization, Toronto Police Accountability Coalition, has been asking the Toronto Police Board for the last 10 years to have a team of a plainclothes officer and a mental health nurse attend as first responders at every call where, in fact, there's someone in mental crisis. The board has consistently refused, and they've said, no, no, we've got to send the armed uniformed officers first. This criminologist believes police funding needs to be reevaluated based on the types of calls they receive. The police themselves will tell you, and this is what other reports have also shown, looking at the police, that their primary competency is not to work as counselors or to work uh, with people who are in distress. So there's a recognition that this is not an appropriate role for them to responding to in, in, in many situations and that we need alternatives. Defund the police! The family agrees. They hope their tireless protesting provokes change. His seven-year-old son is sitting at home waiting for his father to come home because he thought he went to the hospital. Protesters I spoke with tonight say they plan on rallying throughout the evening. Meanwhile, the SIU's investigation is still ongoing. Carol? Talia, thank you. That was the CBC's Talia Ricci reporting.